Graphing the tangent function, pause the video for a moment and fill in quadrant one and four of the unit circle. Notice when I labeled quadrant four, I labeled it with the negative coterminal angles. So negative pi over six, negative pi over four, negative pi over three, and negative pi over two. We're gonna see why in a minute. Now for the tangent values. Remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So when I go do my tangent at pi over six, I'm gonna do one half divided by square root three over two. So then multiply by the reciprocal and I'm gonna get root three over three. Check those tangent values. Really pay close attention to pi over two and negative pi over two. What happens there? Sine over cosine is one divided by zero. Ah, thou shall not divide by zero. So they're undefined values right there. Now that we have our table of values, let's graph. And negative pi halves, I'm undefined. What does that mean? One divided by zero, that's a vertical asymptote. Well, I'm also gonna have one at positive pi halves. So I'm gonna plot the vertical asymptotes first. Now I need to go to negative pi over three. Mm, that's at negative root three. That's about negative 1.7. So I'm gonna do my best to graph that and the rest of the points. Once I've plotted all those points, you can kind of see it almost looks like a little wiggle through the axis. We know that graphs like to follow the asymptotes. So there is one cycle of tangent. Now really make sure you're getting the right shape here. From negative pi halves to zero, we should be clearly concave down. And from zero to pi halves, we're concave up. Well, let's keep graphing in the positive direction. When would we hit another vertical asymptote? Well, tangent at pi is zero. Tangent at three pi over two is undefined again. So I know at three pi over two, I have another vertical asymptote. We know from the unit circle that our values repeat so if I wanted to graph more tangent values in between here, I know that at pi, tangent is zero. At three pi over four, tangent is negative one. And at five pi over four, tangent is positive one. So I'd be right here and right here. Okay, so concave down from pi over two to pi and concave up from pi to three pi over two. Well, we just found some pattern points. We could keep repeating and draw tangent. So what's the period of tangent? What's the horizontal length of one cycle here? Well, from negative pi over two to pi over two is one cycle. So that is pi in length. How many cycles occur between zero and two pi? Well, here's half a cycle between zero and pi over two, then another full cycle and another half cycle all the way to two pi. So that's two full cycles. What about where our asymptotes are at? Well, I can see an asymptote at negative pi halves. I have another one at pi halves. I have another one at three pi halves. So is that just all my pi halves? It's not two pi halves or four pi halves. So it's just the odd multiples of pi halves. Fill in the graph from negative two pi to negative pi halves. Sketch the asymptote and use your pattern points. Negative three pi halves would be my odd multiple of pi halves for that vertical asymptote. And then my pattern points, check your work. Now let's talk about domain and range. Domain would be all values except for those odd multiples of pi halves where I have vertical asymptotes. And range, well, all the y values are represented, so all reals. Now let's look at dilations. We have tangent of three theta. That's inside with the input value, x value. So we know it's going to be a horizontal, is it a stretch by a factor of three? No, remember when it's inside with the x, it's that reciprocal. So I have a horizontal compression by a factor of one third. So now knowing that the period of tangent is pi and that I have a horizontal compression by a factor of one third, all I need to do is multiply. So pi times one third, my new period will be pi thirds. What about the asymptotes? Well, they're gonna work much the same way. It's really nice that factor of one third, multiply by one third. My asymptotes generally are at the odd multiples of pi halves. Well, if I multiply that by one third, then I'll have pi six. And remember, I had positive pi halves and negative pi halves. So my new asymptotes will be at positive and negative pi six. With that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish domain and range before I even sketch the graph. So domain, of course, is all reals except for where the vertical asymptotes are and range is all reals. Now let's sketch. I start with my vertical asymptotes at negative pi six and pi six, then I'm going to use my pattern points. So right in the middle, zero, zero, then negative one to one. 
concave down, concave up, where would that next vertical asymptote be? Well, I'm at pi six currently, and if I add the period pi thirds, I would end up at three pi six, which is pi halves. So we can always add and subtract pi thirds, the period from the previous asymptote. However, remember it's just odd multiples of pi six. So as at one pi six, the next odd multiple is three pi six, which is pi halves. That might be a bit easier. Let's do one more sketch of tangent. Pattern point zero, zero, negative one, positive one, concave down, concave up. Okay, let's pull together all of the transformations of tangent. So if we have the equation y equals a tangent b theta, well, the period is gonna be pi over b. Where does that come from? Because the period of tangent is pi, and then b will be that horizontal dilation. So I multiply by that factor, just like we did, pi times one third. And then of course, one cycle will occur between the negative pi halves and pi halves asymptotes if there is no horizontal dilation. But if there is, then we need to multiply those asymptotes by the horizontal dilation. Last, let's talk about if we have a number in front of that tangent, so that value A. That would be a vertical stretch or compression, and that changes our pattern points to asymptote, then that negative value of A, our zero, positive value of A, and asymptote. In this next example, we're going to see how that vertical dilation plays out. Next example, take a minute, write down your transformations. Vertical stretch by a factor of two and horizontal, did you catch it? Stretch by a factor of four divided by pi because it's the reciprocal of B, pi divided by four. Okay, well the period, tangents period is typically pi. Now I'm multiplying by that horizontal stretch, four over pi, and I get four, hmm, interesting. Well, asymptotes, if we're regularly plus or minus pi over two, now we're multiplying by four over pi, what are we gonna get? Plus or minus four divided by two, which is plus or minus two. Let's sketch before we do domain and range. If I know my period's four, I'm gonna want to label my axis and in integers. I've got my asymptotes at negative two and two right now, but where am I gonna plot those pattern points? Remember, this time we had a vertical stretch by two. So instead of starting at negative one, I'm gonna start down here at negative two, go up to zero, and then up to positive two. Concave down, concave up. There's one cycle of tangent. Let's see if we can get another one. So following my pattern points for the next cycle, it looks like my next asymptote is at six. Do you think you know where the next one would be? Or the next one? I can use my period to figure out where all the rest of my asymptotes are. If my first asymptote is at two, then I add my period of four to get six. And then I would add four again and again to get all the rest of my asymptotes. So when I list my domain, I'm gonna say all reals except those asymptotes. Two plus four n, where n is an integer. And of course, our range is all reals. We're really getting the hang of tangent here. Why don't you pause and describe the transformations on these next two? Check your transformations. Did you remember the negative outside the function is a reflection over the horizontal axis? What does the negative inside the function do? It's a reflection over the vertical axis. Do you think you'd know what this would look like on the graph? Did you figure out how those pattern points change? Instead of starting at that negative a value, I start up at the positive a value. So I go concave up first and then I go concave down. What about the next one? What's a reflection about the vertical axis gonna do to my tangent graph? Well, it kind of looks like the same transformation. So reflecting over the vertical axis looks the same as reflecting over the horizontal axis. That means it's symmetric about the origin. Hmm, that means it's an odd function.